Hey there, everybody. This is Jeff Bradbury from TeacherCast Educational Network with a brand new TeacherCast screencast tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Google Sites. I guess we shouldn't even be calling them new Google Sites. They've been around for the last couple of years. Either way, today, we're going to be talking about how to create a basic website. We're going to be creating this basic website. I'm going to show you how to change the header, add some text, add an image, embed some Google Docs. We're going to talk a little bit about sharing settings. And of course, we're going to round off with how do you publish. So stick around. And if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. All brought to you by the TeacherCast Educational Network. So to create your first Google site, there's two ways of starting that. You can go to sites.google.com slash new. Or in Google Drive, you can click on the blue New button and drop down to More and click on Google Sites. Here I'm going to click on the plus button and it automatically opens up your brand new Google site. The first thing I'm going to do is to change my header. I'm going to click on here and I'm going to change the title of my website. Now you'll see that as soon as I did that, it drops onto two lines. We're going to click on these blue circles and extend this, and that's going to put my title on the same line. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a text box. There's two ways of doing that. The first way is to click on the text box here, and you can simply add text. The second way is to double click anywhere on your canvas, and that brings up this little circle where you can add your text, embed, images, upload, or from Drive. I'm going to click on text. Next, we're going to add some images. There's many ways to add an image to your website. The easiest is by clicking on this image tab. Here, we have a few options. We can search for an image. We can also click on your albums, which is, of course, going to bring up everything in our Google Photos. You can see we've got a few different options here. Or we can click on Google Drive, and you can see we have another option here. Another way to add an image to our website is by simply grabbing an image off of our desktop and dragging it right onto the canvas. And you can see here we have this little button that says drop add. And as soon as I let go of my mouse, it automatically uploads the image and puts it right on our canvas. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to embed a Google Doc onto your Google site. Here we have a Google slide. Now before we talk about embedding, we want to make sure that we check our shared settings. Over here, we want to click on our blue share, and we want to make sure that it's set right here to anyone with the link. If I click on advanced and then change, I can see that we have several settings here. You want to make sure that at least we have the second one down, if not the fourth one down. The fourth one, of course, is anybody in your school, and the second one down is anybody in the world who has the link can see it. If you don't have anything other than private here, you'll be able to see your document, but the world certainly won't. So I'm going to cancel this, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this link here, and I'm going to go back into my website. Now you'll see over here on the right, we've got all of these options. We've got docs, slides, sheets, forms, charts. Now if I click on any of these, I can certainly add any of these types of Google documents. For instance, if I click on slides, I'm going to actually see this Google slide that we were just working on. Everything here is in reverse chronological order from most recent. But really, this is a filter. If I click on the X here, I can simply come over here, hit my command or my control V, and it automatically pulls the URL and embeds it from that Google Doc. And it shows up really nicely here. And if I need to, I can take this and I can drag it around anywhere on my website. The next thing I want to show you is the sharing and collaborating settings. It's important to notice that a Google site by default has two sides to it. It has an editing side, which we're looking at right now, and a publish side. We're going to get to the publishing in just a second. But right now, we're going to take a look at this icon here, this share with others. Now, when we click on that, we have a few options. It says, who has access? If I want to collaborate with somebody and give that other person specifically the ability to edit, I can add their email address down here, and then I can say, can view only the published or can edit? Over here, we have our draft. This is our traditional setting, on, on, 
anybody in our domain or anybody in our domain with the link. Now, I will tell you, if you don't want the world to edit your website, and I don't think you do, don't change this. Leave this here to off only specific people. What many people do is they change this thinking that I want my website to be seen by the public. And what this really means is anybody on the internet can find your website and access it and edit it. And that's the important thing and edit it. Um, don't do that. Make sure that everything is down here. I'm going to hit save. Now, this is a new feature that came in. This is published. Anybody here can find and view. Now, if I change that, I can say anybody can find and view the published version. Anybody in my domain can find the published version or specific people. So most people aren't going to need to change this at all. But you would select this, for instance. Let's say that you were a teacher and you wanted to publish your website, but you only wanted to make it available to your students or the people in your school, you can certainly create your website and only have it published to the specific people in your neighborhood. So I'm going to leave this here, and I'm going to uh, cancel out of this. So those are the shared settings. Again, only use this if you want to be having somebody else collaborate, meaning edit, your website. Finally, when we're finished, we're going to click on the publish button here and we're going to publish our site. This gives us a unique URL. If you are in a domain, an educational domain, for instance, it's always going to be sites.google.com slash whatever your domain is and then your individual page. And so in other words, your page cannot be named the same thing as anybody else in your domain. If you're not in an EDU account, it's going to be sites.google.com forward slash view and then something else. So in other words, not any, everybody can have sites.google.com slash view slash home as an example. You're going to want to make sure that you have an individual name. If I put down here my awesome website, it's actually going to check to see that this name isn't here, sites.google.com slash my domain slash my awesome website. And it says you can use this and then it allows you to publish. I'm not going to hit that right now, but that is how we publish our website. It's important to know that after we've published our website, you can come back here and you can edit anything that you need to. And then when you're finally ready for the world to see it, you can come back up here and click on publish. So as you can see, Google Sites is a fairly easy program to get up and running with. Uh, here you can see I've added a few things. I've changed some text to it. I've moved some of the pictures around just to kind of give you an idea of some of the formatting things. There's, of course, several great resources out there on the web, including some on teachercast.net that you can check out, and including links to an entire Google website demo page that has hundreds of demonstrations and uh, you know features and, and different things that you can do with the website. So check everything out over on teachercast.net net slash Google Sites Demo. We'll, of course, make sure that you guys have the link to that. So on behalf of everybody here on TeacherCast, my name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today. Keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students.